At the beginning of the school year, my school received two new MakerBot 3D printers. Now these are the sketch models and they're only available to schools and classrooms. Uh, our school opted to get two of them because they come in groups of one or two and you get more bang for your buck if you purchase two. More on that in just a little bit. In addition to the two printers, our package came with a few certification seats, a dozen rolls of filament, a two year warranty slash replacement plan, printer tools, additional build plates, and a few other odds and ends. All in, this set of printers run around $2,500 or so. So what do you get for that money? You get two printers that are ready to go out of the box. They're pre-calibrated, auto-leveled. The printers can be connected to the internet via Wi-Fi or ethernet, or as in my case, I keep them offline and just use USB sticks to transfer the prints. When updating the printer's firmware, you can do it through any of these methods as well. The printer stores filament on the right side of the machine behind a plastic magnetic panel. The filament will feed from under the spool up towards the top of the machine where the extruder is housed. There's a small plastic door hiding the mechanics of the extruder. The filament then travels through the Bowden tube to the hot end of the printer. The sketch's design has two ball screws that move the hot end up and down and a third ball screw that moves the bed frontwards and backwards. The bed is heated, spring-loaded, and auto-leveled. In the past few months, I've only had one print that has lifted. The build plates work very well and I've only had to recalibrate the machine's Z height only a handful of times since owning them. The quality of the prints is decent. The printers are very, very quiet, and this comes at the sacrifice of speed. These printers take a long time to produce prints. I don't get a lot of stringing on these machines, but I do get more than I do for my $100 printer at home. The onboard software and touchscreen are just fine, if a little slow to react. You'll get a display of your model, the amount of time it will take to print, and the amount of material you use. The printer has onboard storage for print files, and any prints that come from the USB stick will be transferred over to the internal storage before printing. Removing print files after this takes some time because it can only be done one by one and the touchscreen is pretty slow to respond. Beyond that, there's really not a lot you can do to the machine itself. I generally go ahead and preheat everything before I print, but that's about it. On the software side, MakerBot has an online print platform or software solution that you can use to get your prints ready. I've only really used the online version since it works on all of our computers. If your printers are networked, you can find them when you log into the print website. For me, I go to start a new print, select my model, and load in my STL file. On the right hand side, you're going to have a few options for printing. What I found is the MakerBot slicing software for rafts and supports makes them really difficult to remove cleanly. You're going to have a lot of leftovers and require some sanding. You also do not have any preset options for quality or print size or anything along those lines. I've played around with the settings a bit, but I've found that they don't make a large difference in print time or quality, so I just leave them at the defaults. The biggest thing that you're going to see is positioning of the print. Depending on the orientation, there can be a massive amount of time in what it takes to make that part. The software allows you to rotate, move, set things to the bottom, and pretty much online with any other slicing software I've used. After model is set, you go to export, and the model will slice and download as a .makerbot file. MakerBot does not use G-Code as their file type anymore, and this is going to limit your options to only using MakerBot software as opposed to any other slicing software. So do I think the MakerBot sketch is worth it? It's a complicated question. If you're looking for a ready-to-go solution that you just take the thing out of the box, set it up, and hit print, yeah, it's great. It's quiet, it's slow, but it works really well for what it does. Now, if you like to tinker a little bit more, you can have a lot better options for a lot less money. For instance, I have a $100 Ender 3 and it works great. It produces higher quality prints faster and more inexpensively than the MakerBot Sketch. But I also had to build it myself. So there's some pluses and minuses going on with everything there. My biggest concern about the MakerBot Sketch is the software. It's very limited. And also if MakerBot ever decides to change anything, goes out of business or you don't have internet, your printer's kind of dead in the water at that point. So you have uh, a couple things to consider there. To go back here, uh, my school also has a Dremel 3D printer that's going on its eighth year of operation. The only problem is that the software was also proprietary. I can no longer use that software on my Mac because it's not supported anymore and just flat out will not work. And the software on Windows hasn't been updated in six years. So eventually I'm gonna start running into problems with that software as well. And once that happens, that printer is unfortunately going to be dead in the water. I don't want that to happen on MakerBots because with school money, I'm trying to make this stuff last as long as possible. So if you're willing to tinker and your school is okay with you doing that, I don't think the MakerBot sketch is worth the money. But from a school district's perspective, if they're looking for an out-of-the-box, ready-to-go solution that has support and a warranty, 
it's a great option. And depending on your comfort level with 3D printers, it might be a good option for you as well.